Hi everyone. So something interesting happened today. Um, so where should I start with that? Oh, okay. Um, so this morning. <laughs> I didn't think I had to be at work at 9 o'clock. I thought I had to be at work at 10. So I had made the choice that I was going to go to the gym and I was going to go do these other things but since I didn't have to be at work at 10. But God, so I didn't wait. I was going to get up. And God said, no, just stay in bed for another half hour. I'm like, okay. So I did. And then I got up, I got dressed, and I headed out the door. And I was not thinking that I had to be at work early. So I was like completely nonchalant. I get to the second stop. And out of nowhere, God says, check the calendar today calendar. I don't have to go in until 10. Cassie will be there at 9. And so, but I, I was obedient. I pulled out my phone and I checked my my calendar, the schedule. I was supposed to be at work at 9. I wasn't going to look at the calendar until after. But God was like, no, don't, don't go work out today. I was like, no, well, but you had me sign up. He goes, Monday is really when I want you to start working out. Not today. I'm like, okay. So had I not been obedient, I would have been late for work. Because I wouldn't have gotten to the store to begin working. I would have gone elsewhere and not been to the store until 10. And so... Surprisingly enough, the manager was actually there early. So I went to Target like I normally do in the morning and I grabbed my drinks and I grabbed my, God has been leading me to buy breakfast. Um, so they have like a little Starbucks um, store inside of Target. So I bought, um, they have these little like to go snacks um, it has boiled eggs, it has cheese, crackers, peanut butter, and dried fruit, apricots, which are my favorite. And so he's been leading me to eat the last couple of days, and so I've been, I've been doing that. So I get to the store, and the door's locked. And I was like, okay. So I sent a text to the manager and let him know that I was out front. And then I told them that I almost was late because I didn't think I had to be at work until 10. And so we went through our day. And now the competition, the cooking competition, we're supposed to be, the, the, the voting doesn't start until May. But we're supposed to be uploading things like um, pictures of meals that we're preparing. Um, we're supposed to, you know, have conversations about introducing ourselves to the people uh, on the reason why we like cooking and things like that. And so Ben volunteered to be my um, taste tester for my meals. And I was like, okay, so I told him that I was gonna bring him some food today, and so I brought it in. But God said, don't say anything. Wait for him to ask you for it. I'm like, okay. So I st you know, kept doing my work, and finally, he goes, so, did you bring the food? And I was like, oh, yeah, I did. 
Um, I said, it's in the bag. I said, when, you, when you're ready to eat, just go ahead and take it. And then God was, so he was in the, in the back kitchen making, um, doing the cheese and the, the prep for the day. And God led me to ask him what was in the white bag. And he goes, oh, it's a donut. And, I, and he goes, do you want it? You can have it. I was like, no, I'm okay. And he goes, no, go ahead, go ahead, take it. He goes, I've already had one. I'm like, okay. But I didn't take it. I kept, you know, doing my thing. And then I came back and he saw that I didn't take the bag. And so he grabbed the bag, rips the donut in half, and then hands me the bag. He goes, here, take it. I was like, okay. Thank you. So at the end of the day, because I don't, when I'm supposed to be working, I'm working. I'm not going back there and talking to him or doing any of that. And so, but I wanted to know what he thought of the food that I made. And so the man, the general manager sent me home early. And I was like, you do realize that I'm here through, I'm here through rush, right? And he goes, you are? I'm like, yeah, but if you want me to go home, I'll go home. And he looked at the schedule and he's like, oh, we have <coughs> so and so and so and so. I'm like, okay, <coughs> if you don't need me, I'm out of here. You know, I've got, I've got my hours. And so I went and I clocked out and then I went and I was about to get ready to go. And then I remembered and I hadn't heard from Ben as to what he thought about the food. So I went to the back, and because I was hungry and I hadn't eaten, I took my food, and I went back there, and as I was eating, I was talking to Ben. And so he was telling me, you know, what he thought. And um, he's like, yeah, I was very surprised because I don't, I thought it was going to be too mushy, and because that's the, the, the chilaquiles I made, that's, kind of what they're supposed to be it's, it's supposed to be like a mushy and I'm not a mushy kind of person either so I told him I said no I don't like I don't like when it gets soggy I like it crispy enough so that there's a crunch and you know and it's good flavor and he goes oh yeah and I said and believe it or not there's no chilies in this in in the food like there's no serrano peppers there's no jalapenos there's none of that and he goes so how did you get the heat in there and I'm like well there's a sauce that we use a tomato sauce and it has heat already in it I said but if I use it just by itself it would be too spicy so I tone it down a little bit by adding regular tomato sauce so it's not as hot and he was like oh well where what's the name of this sauce and uh, I couldn't remember the name and as I'm standing there talking to him, I don't realize that the GM is standing behind me. And I turn around, I'm like, he likes doing that. He likes just standing there behind me to see how long it takes me to see, to notice that he's there. And he's like, so what's going on back here? I'm like, nothing. Just talking to Ben. And he goes, uh-huh, talking to Ben, huh? And I was like, yeah, just talking to Ben. And then, but he was insinuating that there was in that it was inappropriate, and I was like, "No, there's there's nothing inappropriate." And then I looked at him and I said, "Ben's my taste tester, and I'm asking him about what he thought of my food." He goes, oh, "Okay," and then he walked away. But it left that, you know. And I'm like, "Wait a minute, no, 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 you're not gonna come in here." and take something completely innocent and turn it and twist it into something it's not. Because he literally was telling me what he thought of the flavoring, what he thought of the food and everything. So it, there was no nothing inappropriate in our conversation. There was nothing inappropriate about how we were discussing the food. You know, it's, it's not like I was standing right next to him and rubbing up against him. No, I was standing far enough away from him. And so 
that way we could talk about what it was that the food, um, what, how the food was. And so then I was like, okay, well, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night. And I left. And because I had to go buy puppy pads, I had to go to Petco. And so I walked in. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever been in a Petco, but Petco has the exterior doors. So you walk through one set of doors. And then to the left is the exit door from the cash registers. And then in front of you is another set of doors that you have to go through. So I went through the external doors and then I went through the internal doors and I went in to go to get the, the puppy pads. And I made my transaction on my way out the door. I've walked out this door many times. I just walk right through the door and then I turn a little bit to the right and the doors open up. And I stood, and I was like, the doors didn't open. I was like, um, why didn't the doors open? And then I started to worry. I'm like, does that mean that there's closed doors now? Like, Father, I don't understand. Like, what, what's going on? So then he led me to go back in through the door that I walked into the first time. But I didn't go through the door. I just stepped in front of the door and the door opened. And then God said, turn around and go out the other way. And I'm like, huh? So I turned around and the door opened. And I was like, okay, I need to understand. So I, the whole way home, I just kept thinking of that. I'm like, why didn't the doors open when I walked through them one way, but they opened when I walked through the doors the other way? And so I kept running that in my head and into my head. And then I get on the bus and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I started to feel sleepy. And I couldn't stay awake. Like I was just like, <sighs> like, you were like, no, I want to go take a nap or I want to go to sleep because I was up quite a bit y yesterday making the food and now I'm tired and ready for bed and so as I'm on the bus and I'm thinking about these open doors and I'm like why didn't the door open when I went one way but it opened when I went the other way and so as I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm writing down the events of the day and um you know, putting pen to paper. <laughs> Sorry, guys. God leads me to look up doors that open, going in doors one way, but coming out the doors a different way. And I was like, okay. And I did a search. And he brought me to, and I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians, chapter 16, so he had me in chapter 16, and he highlighted verse 9 but he had me read verses 1 through 9 and this is where Paul is visiting um, the churches of Galatia and what caught my attention was when on verse 2 where Paul gives instruction to the churchgoers and saying upon the first day of the week let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And so I, I was like, what, huh? what does this mean? Like, so God has been having me put money in different places. 
I have a place in my Bible where I have a certain amount of money. I have a certain area in my wallet where God has me put another set of money. And then he has me put my working money, the money that I use when I, he sends me to go get drinks or he sends me to go get, you know, small things that I can use cash for. The big stuff, like when I go grocery shopping, that comes out of my paycheck, the money that I have in my account, um, you know, like rent and stuff. But so I was like, what does this mean? And he goes, he said, it's what you've been doing for me. You've been putting money in different places because there will come a time where I will ask you for that money and you're going to give it to me. I'm like, okay. That sounds <laughs> like something you would do. <laughs> and so then he kept having me read on and it gets to the part where Paul tells the people that he is going to come to stay with them for a while. Now I'm like, what does that mean? Does that mean that you're going to come and stay with me for a while, Father? And he says, no. But he said, I am about to pass through your city and I need you to be ready because when I come through, your blessings will be here. And I was like, oh, okay. He's in my neighborhood, but he's about to pass over my home. And once he passes over my home, He has already had me anoint the house. He's had me anoint my dog. He's had me anoint myself. Because the things that are going to start to happen are going to be supernatural and they're going to be miracles upon miracles upon miracles. He's been showing me the words miracles. He's been showing me speed. He's been showing me swiftly. He's been showing me recovery. He's been showing me restoration. He's been showing me... So, and... and, the the consistent wording is overwhelming like i step out of the house and i see five six cars with vehicles with the word restoration on them or i see seven or eight other cars that say speed in different variations uh, fast uh, as soon as possible in fact there was a van that came here that parked next door to my space, to my room, and it said ASAP, as soon as possible. As soon as possible is here, in the blink of an eye. And then, in verse 9, Paul talks about a great door a great door that has been opened. And I was like, Father, what what kind of great door? And he brought me to Isaiah chapter 60, verse 11. Therefore, the gates shall be opened continually, and they will not shut, not night and not daytime. God's about to open the floodgates. God is about to let out his blessings. Are you ready? Are you ready to receive the abundance of the kingdom? Are you ready to hear confirmations of the judgments 
being given out. For as we go up, those that have been against us will go down. And let's not rejoice over their downfall, but rejoice in the goodness of God. Open doors, open season, it's here. In the name of my Lord Jesus, God bless you, amen.